Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExitAutomation.com. Welcome to another video for Kubernetes for Testers course. And this will be talking about understanding Kubernetes controllers. Kubernetes controllers. So the controllers are managed by Kube managed controllers and there are following controllers available. Something like node controllers, which are responsible for noticing and responding when the node goes down and replication controller, something which are responsible for maintaining the correct number of pods for every replication controller object in the system. So we saw how we can work with pod, creating a pod in our previous videos of this course, and we also saw how we can delete a pod and describe the pod. But what if there are like one pod that we created and if we want like 10 or 15 parts, then you can just tell to the replication controller as a desired state, and again, I'm saying something called as a desired state. And this is something which has been used a lot in the Kubernetes world, where there is something called as desired state, where you just specify how many number of pods that you require in the YAML file. And then Kubernetes will take all the heavy lifting for you to create all the pods and it will run all the con containers for you and do all the managing stuff. So that's called as desired state. And also you can maintain the state to be always seven. So if you say seven or 10 or 15, replication controller will ensure seven or 10 or 15 parts for you. That's something called as a desired state and replication controller does things for us. And there is another controller called as endpoint controller, which populates the endpoint object. And then comes the service account and token controller, which is gonna create the default account and API access token for the new namespace. Well. There are these kinds of controllers available as we saw even in the introduction video of this course but the one which we are going to be very much focused on is going to be on the controllers which are going to be helpful on the node side and these are some of the controllers that are available and the one which we are going to discuss or this one the replication set replication controller and the deployments so the replication controller ensures that a specified number of pod replicas are running at any one time. So in other words, the replication controller makes sure that a pod or a homogeneous set of pods are always up and running. That's very, very important. So replication controller will make sure that the specified number of pods in the YAML file that you have given in the manifest to the master is always available for you up and running. And there is something called as replica set. And again, it's the next generation of replication controller though. The only difference between the replica set and the replication controller right now is the selector support. So there is a keyword called selector that you can use within the YAML file. And it is very, very helpful to support a new set based selector requirements and described in the label user guide, whereas replication controller only supports equality based selector requirements. And then comes the last one, which is nothing but the deployments. So a deployments controller provides a declarative update for parts and replication sets. So you describe a desired state in the deployments object and the deployment controller changes the actual state to the desired state at the controller rate. So you can define deployments to create new replica sets or to remove existing deployments and adapt all these resources with new deployments. And again, deployments is like a higher level construct which is going to be useful for doing the rolling updates for the pod. So for instance, if our pods are running some older versions of applications, and if you want to make an updates for those applications, you can just use this deployment to do the rolling updates, and it is gonna do all the updates for you within those containers running within the pods. Again, deployment is something very, very big concept. And again, we'll be talking about that in our upcoming videos of this course. But today I'll be talking about the controllers, which is nothing but the replication controller, because that's too much specific to the parts. So let's quickly start understanding and work with the replication controller then and understand how things work. So for that, I'm gonna flip to my Mac operating system. All right, so I'm back to my Mac and this is my item terminal editor. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start working with the replication controllers. So as you know already that we have created the parts using this particular YAML file in our previous videos of this course. So you know that there's something called as API version v1 and kind is part and the metadata is first part and we use this alpine but for some reason it was not working. Well, we were using that. So instead this time I'm just gonna use nginx 
and we're gonna use the image as nginx as well right so this way it is gonna spin up one part for me but what if I want to spin up the same kind of part at least 10 or 15 replicas so if I want to do that I can do using what is called as a replication controller so for replication controller these codes that we have written are going to be the same thing I don't say it's a code well it's a command so these commands are going to be the same one and even the spec is going to be the same just that there is one more option that we need to use what is called as a replica or replicas and then we can mention it as let's give us five for now and then we need to use what is called as a selector so again the selector is a little different it uses the equality match then which is something available uh, in replica set so I'm just going to use the selector here so the name is going to be the app name so here I'm just going to give an app name as uh, first part again so the selector name and the name of this particular part is going to be same pretty much like that and then I'm just going to use what is called as a template and the template is going to be something just going to contain the metadata once again and the metadata is going to have what is called as a uh, label and this label is going to have what is called as an app and the name of the app is once again just going to give us part or I mean the first part or something like that or maybe uh, because it's going to be too much confusing uh, I just want to isolate this part name a little bit let's call this as nginx app something like that right it makes more sense now so let the spec be something different at least so this is first part here right so this is the thing and so this uh, part name is nginx by the way and then we're going to use the same image here and one more thing is going to be because we are going to use the images now so I'm just going to use spec once again and let's do an intendation here there we go so this spec here that you can see is going to be for the replication set so this is going to remind pretty much the same that we discussed before and this is different for the replication controller and this one is going to be for the image that we're going to pull right and this spec is actually sitting within our this spec right which is nothing but the replication controller so if you just try to make it in a different uh, level it's not going to work so make sure that it is currently intended if not it's going to throw you an error but visual studio code is much intelligent enough to show you this intendation things which is kind of very very cool very handy for me uh, while we were working on that so I'm just gonna save this or maybe I can just create uh, one more file here and let's call this as replication controller or RC uh, YAML. and I'm gonna paste it over here and this guy let's turn it back to the previous coding because it was part so I'm just going to leave this guy as it is like before so I'm just going to leave this guy as part.yaml file and this one is the replication controller.yaml file. I'm just going to save it and now I'll be coming back here once again and then I'm going to create pretty much like how we did before. So before that let me also check how many parts is currently running. So let me see. So I'm just going to put kubectl get parts and you can see that we have so many parts running in here. So let me delete these uh, parts which I have created while I was trying to work it out so we'll be talking about deployments in our upcoming videos of this course but as of now I'm just gonna delete that so you can probably see how I'm deleting it so it's gonna be kubectl delete uh, deployment I guess the name is gonna be uh, selenium node firefox or something if I'm not mistaken there you go it is deleted so now if I see the parts you can see currently it is in terminating stage which is cool alright so I will also clear this and now if I just do a get part you can see that we only have like uh, two parts running I will also delete this uh, hello part so that it will be more clear so uh, kubectl delete part hello part there you go and now you can see that we only have one part so it is in terminating stage which is really cool 
So now we can start uh, doing the deployment of our replication controller that we just created, which is this one, right? So I'm just going to do that. So let's see. Uh, it's going to be kubectl once again. And then we're going to create from the file. So hyphen f. And then it's going to be rc.yaml file. Oops. Uh, it says that unknown field selector. So let's me let me see what's really ha gone wrong. Oh, okay. So this is still in part. So that's the problem of the copy pasting. So it should be replication controller. And let me also change the name a little bit. Maybe uh, it's going to be something wrong as well. So I'm just going to give this as nginx app, which is going to be cool. So now if I just try to create it, there you go. It's just created now. So now I expect it to have around five replicas of the same image. Just one shot I have given and you can see that it is going to create five different containers for me and you can see it's all in contain, cre container creating state. So now I can just do a uh, describe of this particular pod, uh, which is going to be, let's say this one, copy, paste it over here and you can see that it is currently uh, started as well. Pulling, pulled, created, started. Cool. So fast. Very, very easy. So this is how you can see that it is going to create the parts for us pretty fastly here. And now even if I try to delete one of this particular part, so the one which we just saw here, instead of describing, I'm just going to delete it. It's deleted now. The CQV7Z has been deleted. Now if I see here, it has been terminated, but it is also creating one more part pretty quickly, even without giving a second chance. So you can see that this guy has been deleted. This particular part, the CQV7 is it, is gone, but there is a new part created and is also maintaining the number as five always. So that's the desired state. So we have just declared the YAML file to maintain five replicas and it is automatically created for us pretty fastly. And you can see that it has an age of like one minute and this one is created in 13 seconds before. So the age is also gonna be showing you some difference, like how long the pod is actually running within our Kubernetes cluster. So now if I want to make this something like 10 maybe, I'm just gonna save it. So if I want to do that, I can just do exactly the same thing here, like create I guess it's not create, uh, sorry, it is actually apply. So I'm just gonna give it this apply and I'm gonna hit enter now. It is showing some warning message, but don't worry about it yet. So now if I just do a uh, get parts here, you can see that it is also creating some other new parts for me very, very fast. And you can see the age difference here. That's very important because some of the parts are like three minutes before created and these are like 21 seconds before and these are like two minutes before. So you can see that the 21 seconds is like the one which we just created, the new parts, and these are the old parts which is actually sitting in here. That's how you can work, work with the replication controllers, right? You can see everything is up and running right now. And now, how do you delete all these parts in one shot? So what is the command? Again, you saw me how I deleted the deployments. It's gonna be pretty much the same thing. All you have to do is kubectl delete replication controller you can just specify as rc and then the name of the application which is nothing but the nginx app right so now if i hit enter you can see all the replication controllers will be deleted in just one shot so all the parts will be deleted in one shot something like this right so this is how you can work with replication controller and you can maintain the state of all the different parts using replication controller in Kubernetes, right? So now you can see that all the parts are currently gone. Starting our next video, we'll see how we can work with services in, in much greater detail so that we'll understand how to work with services and how we can intercommunicate with different parts using same network IP address and also access the parts from outside world because so far we have not accessed the parts from outside world, which we'll be doing from the services video that we can discuss next. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.